get going, thank you so much for watching. If you can, please hit that like button before we get started. And also don't forget to subscribe for the latest videos coming out soon. What's up guys? Time for phase two of this uh, little repair or maintenance. Uh, we're talking about my dance shoes. These are my Warner Kearns. I've had them for about four years now. I'm going to bring them a little closer. And you can see that they're really kind of worn through. Uh, you see where the leather's real nice and um, looks actually fairly, fairly decent for being a four-year-old shoe and having over uh, 20,000 lessons on it. Um, probably more like 50,000 lessons on it. Because like I said, I've had them for a long time. But they're pretty worn down and they need a facelift. So today, I'm going to be attempting to give these a brand new facelift um, as I do a little polishing. A traditional polishing kit. Now, uh, for those of you guys that don't know, they used to polish shoes all the time. They still do. Uh, it's kind of a lost art if you ask me. Unless you're in the military, then you'll know a lot about it. And you'll have a shoe polish that's just like this. It's come either in black or brown for those of you who guys uh, who wear brown now keep in mind if you wear brown you might have to shop for a specific tint of brown but uh, uh, not to get confused with the colors um, this wool uh, uh, rag here uh, which we'll talk about a little bit later this is more for the finishing prop polishing aspects and then usually you'll get two brushes um, the first style of brush is the applicator itself as you can see, this has a black tip and the other one is brown. So you don't get them confused. You don't want to mix them around. So um, that's a very important thing. The second type of brush that you'll see is the actual polishing brush itself. So we'll talk a little bit about this. And the fibers are very soft. It's very nice. And the goal is to, once you apply the, um, the polish on, then you want to scuff it out with this or brush it out. So today we're going to go ahead and do this. Go ahead and set that down, and I'm going to walk you through the process. It's really easy. The only difference is, is I'm going to use an applicator from a different brush set. Like I said, brush sets come in all types, but this one I've had for a little while. It's kind of <laughs> been around the block, and uh, let's just face it. <laughs> it's time to get a new one. So I'm going to pull out that brush. I really like that brush as well. Uh, and I'll pull out the applicator which sometimes comes to be like this, which you'll see it's a plastic um, stem, and it'll have like a foam basis. I don't like these too much uh, because they kind of stiffen up a little bit over time uh, with excessive uh, brushing, but you know, what the heck, we'll use it today uh, just because I don't feel like, um, you know, doing it, uh, using the brand new one. Um, also keep in mind that this can be messy to work with, so um, you can wear gloves if you wish or uh, if you choose not to do that. Um, also, uh, keep in mind, you don't want to do this uh, over your carpet, like, which I'm about, I'm about to do. <laughs> but I'm experienced, so it's okay. Anyway, it comes with a little film there. That's just to keep the lid from getting dirty. But sometimes you'll get the brushing uh, concept like this where it looks a little faded, but as you can see, as, as soon as I start working with it, it all gets all nice and melty like that. Um, when they're really, really old, what I'll tend to do is I'll go ahead and um, apply um, a little fire to it. Just put a little light, a match um, to it, light it on fire, which I'm not going to demonstrate today. Uh, but what that does is if it's really dried up and kind of cakey, I'll do that and it'll uh, soften it up. Let's start with this one. So make sure I'm in focus here. Again, I like to stick my hand in the shoe. It gives me a better feel for the size and the edges. And uh, I'm just going to make sure we're in focus and I'm just going to start applying it. Here it is. You can see it shiny. It's brand new. It's all over my applicator. And I'm just going to rub that on right on the dull spots. Counterclockwise motion and reverse that motion as well. And the whole purpose behind this is you want to fill in every nook and cranny. So you never know where the leather's um, going to be. Um, uh, pulling from or torn from so you want to cover as much of it as possible a little bit will go a long ways guys you don't need to put this on too thick but as you can kind of already see if I applied it you can tell where it's not and where it is um, I believe in saying go a little bit at a time do one area at a time don't be rushed to do the whole darn shoe and for example, there it is. Applied it on this shoe. Just 
just letting that sit for a second. And if you need more, it's okay to put on a little more, but like I said, don't go too crazy. You just need a little bit. It'll go a long ways. Um, this is all trial and error, so by all means, if you need to do it two or three times, you're not gonna hurt the shoe. Uh, well, unless you're purposely trying to hurt the shoe or applying it to the bottom, which is a new, new, new. That's right, I did do that. <laughs> so for today's goal, I'm gonna do it right just on this corner, just to kind of show you the difference in the contrast. I'll go ahead and do it on the back here as well. You see this part right here, it's uh, kind of showing a little wear. The more often you do this, the newer and nicer the shoe looks longer. Um, of course, keep in mind, you know, certain shoe uh, makers will use different materials. Again, these are Warner Kearns. They are not the cheapest shoes out there, especially for new teachers. Um, but they're phenomenal. They are Italy or from Italy. I hope there's no buddy out there that gets offended when I say that their leather is top quality. Um, not trying to promote use of leather for shoes, but guess what? That's what shoes are made out of. At least we're. There we go. So, anyways, there it is. I'll let that sit for a little while. Um, as you can see again, it's been applied. This is where it's not applied the tip as you can see and that's where it's been applied So what I want to do now is I want to kind of just let that sit as long as I can And again as I do this, I'm just going to show you Where I've applied it I think that's been long enough Keep in mind when it's fresh like that, you don't want to rub it up against your arms and your hands. You can get dirty. This stuff does wipe off, but for the most part, you try to keep it as clean as possible. A little bit of information about the wire brush, if you, or I'm sorry, wire brush, about the hair brush. Uh, this is 100% horse hair. Uh, it is made in China again, but it doesn't really matter. Um, I think there are some out there that are synthetic hairs and that's fine if you want to use that. Or use whatever works for you. I use Kiwi. It's just popular. You find it everywhere from Target to Walmart to Amazon. So it doesn't matter. And it's really soft. It's really, really soft and durable. Um, but it's still strong enough and sturdy enough to get the job done. So this is basically what I like to say. Is you're going to hold this brush like this. There's grooves on here to kind of give you the indication of where to put your hands and fingers and you just basically line it up there. The action you want to get is a consistent action, side to side or forward and backwards, however you decide to brush this. It's just to give um, a consistent stroke. Now you will change it up as we'll go along, but here let me demonstrate this. We'll just do it on the back here. I'm just gonna hold this and I'm just going to go back and forth. So my goal is to Evenly brush one way then brush the other way. one way then brush the other way So I'm literally going back and forth back and forth and do it sideways here so you can kind of get an idea so I'm gonna do that as Little friction a little speed You can kind of see that starting to shine up a little bit. I didn't apply too much to the rear end there Let's see how it looks in the front here same exact concept. Again, this might have to be done two or three times to really get good results. Change the direction of the buffing or brushing or polishing so the fibers and hairs can Get in all the spots you need to, to. Now I'm also spreading the shoe with my fingers on the inside. As you can kind of see there, I might pull my finger out to give a specific spot, push my finger up against it, especially down here.
So for the most part, that's all I'm going to do for right now, just to kind of show you a little bit of difference. Now, hopefully your shoes don't get as worn out as mine did, but you can clearly see a difference between non-applied and applied. It's got a little bit more of a shine to it. It's got a little bit better look to it, and you can see the difference. Um, now, if you're going to look up close, you're going to still see the wear and tear in the shoe but automatically you can see that that looks much better and all you're really doing is kind of giving it a paint job you're kind of repolishing rebuffing the leather to what it is supposed to look like versus that grade worn out piece right so uh, understand it's not going to be perfect it's not going to make your shoe look brand new but it's going to be the closest thing to being brand new especially for those of you guys want to uh, prolong the life of your shoe. Um, as a student, you don't need to buy shoes very often. Sometimes as instructors, we can go through a pair of shoes in, as, in three to six months. So, um, especially for new instructors, if you're not teaching that many lessons or making that much money, uh, you want to be able to still keep the appearance of having new shoes always um, always look the part. Don't, uh, don't come in and duct tape shoes. I think that's ridiculous. Uh, if you can't afford to buy shoes, why are you teaching lessons? Uh, sometimes you have to make a sacrifice. <laughs> and I did. <laughs> I lived a little bit on Top Ramen for a while so I can have new shoes and new dance clothes. Uh, because if my students are paying money to dance with me, then I better well look like the dancer that they're paying for. So there you go, guys. There's just a little bit of a before and after shot. Just so you can see exactly the difference in how they look. And uh, once again, it's nothing tricky to it, nothing too hard about it. It's just a, a horseshoe brush. It's an applicator. Uh, and it's just plain, um, just plain shoe polish. But this is a, this is a trick that's kind of uh, lost sometimes. So um, I'll bring it up here so everyone can see. Just regular shoe polish, uh, whether it be from this kit, which doesn't have a top anymore or a name or brand, it's just a little travel kit. I like these little kits because I can just throw them in my suitcase or whatever the case may be. Or it can be a little one like this one, uh, on a Kiwi leather kit, um, care. So it just really, really depends. What I haven't taught you guys how to do is how to use the uh, actual wire or the um, this part, the cloth. And you've seen this in the movies and whatnot. When people will open this up and they'll put their shoe down and they'll buff it back and forth like this. It's the same exact concept. And that's going to give you a real nice finish to it. Uh, for the lack of extra hands and uh, props to hold my shoe up, I'm not going to do that today. But that gives you an idea. What you want to do is put the shoe on, put it in there and start buffing it. The higher it is, the better it is. You want to be able to kind of go against the grain with, uh, with this product here. But that's it. That's my little piece on shoe care, and that will help prolong the life of the shoe. It already looks fantastic compared to its uh, brother here. So as you can tell, yeah, you can still see where it's worn, but it's not going to be as evident. And if I'm on a dance floor, you'll never know it. That's just the truth about it. So keep in mind, it will pay it for itself in the long run. I think these brushes only, or these kits only cost five, ten dollars at the most. So um, save yourself the money and get yourself a kit and uh, that's how you brush a shoe. So thank you so much guys. Appreciate it and we'll look forward to hearing from you soon. If you have any questions or comments, uh, leave your feedback in the comment down below and uh, thank you so much. Guys, if you have any more questions about anything you saw today, um, please feel free to draw a comment comment down below I'll be more than happy to answer any questions also if you have any questions on dance shoes uh, please see ballroom exchange um, they have a phenomenal selection of dance shoes that you can choose from both women and men's practice shoes and competitive shoes I'll put a link down below so that you'll have all the information thanks for watching have a great day